It had been a busy bank holiday, but Percy and Ryan were now back in the yard resting, waiting for Gordon to leave with the express. <laughs> <laughs> Any second now. Come along, come along. Express coming through. Uh, oh, what? Ow! What's on? Fog detonators? How the... Do you two have anything to do with this? Uh oh, here comes trouble. Ryan, Percy, what do you two tank engines think you're playing at? Oh, you're only having a bit of fun, James. Don't get your brake pipe in a twist. Fun or not? You two should know your place and keep out of the way of bigger, prouder engines. Thank you, James. I wasn't talking about you, Gordon. These two made me late earlier, shunting my train without a brake van. I don't know how they have the cheek to do such a thing. Yes, and they're about to make me late. The Express waits for no one. Goodbye, little James. You two are on the main line now, kids. We have to follow rules here, and we don't break them. We don't do things like your criminal branch lines do. Really, James? I remember hearing from Toad that you've been caught speeding a few times, or going on fighting since you aren't meant to. Well, that's different. That was me showing what a splendid engine can really do, and if you don't mind me, what this splendid engine has to do now is to take a passenger train. Good day. Run me through the plan again. It's not made any sense to me. Nothing ever makes sense to you. Pay attention this time and stop playing with that Lego. Uh, sorry. 3 a.m. every morning, a train leaves for Barrow with the post train. You and I are going to go down to Chambers Bridge and we're going to take over it. I have a question. What? Why are we stealing from a post train? How much are a bunch of letters going to be worth to the black market? Now nah, you prit stick, it ain't letters we're after. These trains have a HVP, a high value package coach, full of money, and I mean a lot of money. It's just been, it's just been bank holiday, isn't it? So that train will be loaded tonight. Uh, got it. Uh, so how are we going to take over the train? There'll be very few trains so early in the morning. We'll cover over the signal light, the train will stop, and we lock the crew on board the train. This is foolproof, Jerry. But we aren't fools. Even oh. better. Oh. Meanwhile, James arrived at Wellsworth, where he found Edward. Edward, thank goodness, an engine with a moral conscience. You keep Bill and Ben in line, don't you? Do us a favour and teach Percy and Ryan the same, please. Take it easy, James. They mean no harm. Besides, it's nice to see that Ryan has settled in well. Too well, he's a bit puffed up for his own good I'd say, going around as if he'd won an Oscar or something. Now James, it isn't right to talk about other engines behind their bunker. 
And since you're right next to me, you're not swan to talk. I wouldn't say you have the perfect attitude either. James didn't like this at all and steamed away in a terrible mood. Later that night, he was at the big station waiting for Percy to shunt his mail wagons. Hurry up, Percy! This is meant to be a fast train! Then why have they chosen a slow engine to take it? <whistles> I'd take care if I were you, James. Taking the post train can be a more difficult job than you think. No speeding this time. I've no need to turn to the life of crime, thank you very much. I think I know how to handle a late night post train, Percy. Your assistance is not required right now. Good night. James left in a hurry. Whilst further down the line, the two railway thieves, John and Jerry, were hurrying to make sure everything was prepared for the heist. They were preparing to paint over a signal light in order to stop James. Wait, we can't paint over a light. Why not? Because the, because the light won't shine through, will it? The train won't stop if it can't see a signal telling it to. Hmm, <sighs> fine. But what else do you suggest we do? Just then, the signal moved up, indicating the all clear for the line ahead. John and Jerry noticed that the wire it was connected to began to move. That's what we'll do. We'll cut the wire and the signal will fall to stop. And that's what they did. The signalman knew nothing as James rolled by, equally unaware of the shock he was in for next. In the distance, he saw a glowing lamp. Bother! Red signal! At this time of night, what are we waiting here for? I have an important post train and we're in the middle of nowhere! Beats me. I'm sure it will lift soon. Unless the signalman's fallen asleep. It wouldn't be the first time. Unbeknownst to them, at the other end of the train, John and Jerry had locked the guard in his van. Then their task became even easier for them. The driver spoke to the fireman. Well, that does it, Rule 55. We've been standing here long enough. Sorry, you'll have to go down to the next signal box and find out what's going on. This was the chance they had been waiting for. As the fireman walked ahead, John and Jerry leapt to the cab, one on each side, and led the driver away hey, before hey, he knew what was happening. Hey, what? Oh, what's what's going going they took him to the end of the train and locked him in with the guard. Ralph, have you been asleep all this time? Whilst this had been going on, James was at the front of the train very confused. Driver! Driver! What's going on? Driver? We're your new drivers now, steam engine. The only problem with that is, I'll do a drive train. <laughs> We're taking you for a little detour journey. We won't hurt you. We just want the valuables you've got on board your train. So, so long as you keep your mouth shut, you'll Excuse be okay. Excuse me! Nobody tells me what to do. Who do you think you are raining a train at three in the morning? I'm supposed to deliver the mail train to the mainland and I don't intend to stop for two amateur gangsters. As this was happening, further down the line, Ryan noticed a signalman walking towards him. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, wasn't the late night post train meant to go have gone through by now? Yes, it was. It's not cleared the section yet, so something must be delaying it. I can't allow you to carry on until it passes, I'm afraid. You'll just have to wait here for a while. Uh oh, okay. Ryan began waiting, but he didn't have to wait for long before Edward approached on the other track, heading opposite him. Oh, uh, Edward, are you heading back up to Tidmouth? Yes, heading home after a long day. Why do you ask? Aren't you running late, Ryan? Well, uh, James hasn't come past yet. Uh, I, I was wondering if you could uh, keep a lookout for him on your way home. Hmm, that's odd. Not like James to be held up with an express service. I'll see you back in two. Good night, Ryan. Night! So long! 
back at the red signal, a red engine sat fuming at being delayed by two people who didn't even know how to drive a steam engine. Take your time lads, not like I've got places to be or anything. Neither do you I suppose. Prison mustn't be a nice place to go I expect. I said be quiet, you don't have a say in the matter. As soon as we work out how to drive you, we'll be out of here. Oi, Jerry, you worked it out yet? Mm, so there's the main manifold. And this must be the regulator. Aha! Got it, we're off! The train slowly started to roll away. James could do nothing to stop the thieves. We've just passed the red signal, you know. That's against railway regulations. Our plans override any railway regulations, thank you very much. Besides, I thought I told you to be quiet. At last, they approached the white sheet tied to the line side. This was the indication mark to stop. What a dirty sign! You aren't making me sideline onto that aisle! Well we are, so get used to it. And do you ever stop complaining? Complaining? I'm not complaining. I just don't think it's very appropriate for you to be stealing from the mail train of all things. You two should be ashamed of yourselves and- Quiet! <sighs> Did you get the lorry, Jerry? Yep. Here she is. Let's unload the mailbags before anyone sees us. John and Jerry quickly dispatched James's mailbags into a waiting van. We're gonna be rich with all this money. If we escape with it, we are, my friend. And we are, so long as this red rust bucket don't say anything. Rust bucket! I'll have you know I'm the pride of the North Western Fleet, the life and soul of the railway, and it's my paint with and brass that gives this railway its shining image. I'm telling you now, you're not going to get away I with this. I told you to be quiet. Don't make me use this spray paint on you, son. Spray paint? Oh, I'm so frightened. What's the worst you could do with a few cans of paint? Nothing scares me. Oh, really? Well, we'll see about that, won't we? Hey, what are you doing? You, you can't do that! John walked all around James. By the time he was done, James was not the splendid red engine that he was before. My... my paintwork! My beautiful, beautiful paintwork! You've ruined it! Nobody touches my paintwork, mister! And that brass took weeks to polish! How dare you even think you can get away with vandalising such a splendid looking engine like myself with your little drawings? I'm one of a kind, mister. You don't see me painting over the Mona Lisa. So why do you think you can ruin a work of art like me? It's... it's oh, disgusting! Oh, now. Jane, get out. what are you doing here? Edward, thank goodness. These thieves have tried to rob the mail train. They've, they've stolen everything on board. We need to stop them. Call the police! What thieves? James looked to his side and caught the lorry speeding out of the sidings and off into the air of the night. Well, what do we do now? The police will never get to them in time! We'll just have to cut them off. That's Wallsworth Road they've headed on. They'll have to cross the railway at the bridge further down. How do you know that? You learn a few things when you go down the main line a bit slower, James. Right, if you'll excuse me, I've got a pursuit to pursue. Yep, just leave me here, all alone with a dirty siding, no crew. Cheers, Edward! Edward chunted down the main line in hope to beat the thieves to the bridge. He used all the steam he could summon to feed his pistons, which turned his wheels faster and faster. He was out of breath when the road bridge came into view. No sooner had his brakes ground to a stop, the driver and fireman jumped down from the cab and scrambled quickly up the embankment onto the road. <laughs> I have a maiden time as all I can say. Tired by the unexpected speed, Edward steam swelled high as he tried to catch his breath. It swelled under and around the bridge. 
Ha ha! We made it, John. We made it. Now it's just home sweet home with all this cash. What? We could buy a new car with all this money. <gasps> Look out! Whoa! Whoa! Ah! I think we're gonna need that new car. The money! It's everywhere! Don't move an inch, you're surrounded. I'm beginning to think these steam trains don't give in easy. You don't say! Surrounded by Edward's crew and the walls of the embankment, they were going nowhere. It wasn't long before the police arrived and led them away. Mind your head, miss. But we're innocent! We didn't commit no crime, Mr. Officer Police, sir. Cross my heart, I'd hope to eat pie. Oh, really? Then how do you explain the scatter of mailbags and money all over the tracks, let alone the wreck of the lorry? You two are both under arrest. Don't worry, John. Someone will bail us out. Right? Ryan, you were certainly right to be suspicious about James having been delayed. When he's usually boasting about being early, I thought something would be up. I just passed him now. His car and driver were just locked on the train, and Fireman was wandering down the line all by himself. All's rather well Enzel, I suppose. There won't be a robbery on any mail train today. Is James alright? I expect he's quite shaken up from the whole ordeal. <laughs> Not really. The complete opposite, actually. He won't stop complaining. Have you seen what they've done to him? The thief sprayed graffiti all over his paintwork. Oh dear. Of all the engines to do that to, James is the worst. He's been in a foul mood recently, with you and Percy particularly. A huge commemoration and thanks to both of you. We would like to congratulate you for helping to stop such a criminal robbery taking place. If there's anything we can do to repay you, let us know. Um, Edward, uh, if it's alright with you, I think I have one last trick that I'd like to teach James a lesson with. Oh really? And what would that be? trying to sleep. You'll get plenty of time to sleep in prison. Don't worry. Prison? What are you talking about? We've had reports that you were the engine responsible for assisting in a post-train robbery attempt last night. Seeing as that you were involved in the crime and violated both national and railway law, you're being placed under arrest. Anything you say from now on can be used as evidence against you. But, but, I'm innocent. I'm no criminal. It wasn't my fault. Eh, tell it to the judge. Oh my, James. Ryan told me you weren't the one to turn to a life of crime. Oh, this is a surprise. I can't believe this is happening. This might be of use, Edward. <laughs> I think you're right, officer. Thank you. Signal. Ugh, now what are we waiting for? I have an important post train here. Thank you, Officer Edward. Inspector Donald and I will take it from here. Wunderbar, we're done. 
Oh no, away we go. So, what do you know about the crime? Where were you at 3am last night? How did you come to know the other thieves involved with the crime? Oh, for crying out loud! It's disgusting! <laughs>